Now, I have to say, um, I was a little bit um, um, reluctant to do a knife and patch because we are not having these patients. Fortunately, we are following our patients from the neonatal period, and we are doing everything to avoid the chronic pulmonary arteries. So there is a wide spectrum of pathology. I will just uh, repeat uh, something that my predecessors already mentioned, from simple valve membranous atresia to severe hypoplastic pulmonary arteries. As a hypoplastic pulmonary arteries, we consider the pulmonary arteries are less than two millimeters in diameter. They are confluent, intrapericardial, intrapulmonal, confluent, or non-confluent. There is the <clears throat> vast majority of a heterogeneity variability in MAPGAS with different kinds of obstructivity, and we already heard yesterday the coronary artery anomalies. So for a better understanding and for a better planning of the surgical treatment, it is uh, introduced in Castaneda, just a dividing in four types you already seen yesterday. So with the complexity, also with the pathological complexity, rises, increases complexity of treatment strategies. So what is the goal of the, of the surgical, uh, surgical treatment? It is a biventricular repair because we've got a good developed two ventricles, and it is a RV-RV ratio 0.6, so it is a low right ventricle pressure. Right ventricle to pulmonary artery continuity, balanced pulmonary perfusion, preserve crows of pulmonary artery and vascular tree, and limit number of reoperations and reinterventions, and offer with this way, with this protocol, high quality of life and life expectancy. Is there the reality? So the field of therapeutic strategies, um, it begins uh, with, uh, uh, with the admission of the patients, with the medical stabilization, and there are two options of the interventional therapy with the balloon, stand, and coiling, and the surgical strategies of the one multiple stage uh, correction with or without unifocalization, with or without VSD closure, or VSD closure with fenestration, or VSD closure with fenestration, and a, and a valve, so one-way fenestration. So what we do if we got an adequate size of the pulmonary arteries, there's early complete repair in neonatal period, and in inadequate size of the pulmonary arteries, it is an initial shunt. If it is uh, <clears throat> good growth, adequate growth, then stage by ventricular repair. If got a <clears throat> unifocalized, that means major collateral that is feeding a large, uh, a large part of the lung, you have to unifocalize uh, this vessel also in the neonatal period. The patients say, uh, very often need a repeated chance, need a, another anti-grade palliation as a REOT uh, transannular patch or RVPA conduit as an interim palliation to more increase the potential for growth of the pulmonary arteries before we can do the biventricular repair. And if we reach the good growth, good size of the pulmonary arteries, we can proceed to the stage biventricular repair. So that is, again, developed central artery, early complete repair, underdeveloped center, part, uh, center pulmonary artery, always shunt. If it is a MAPCA, unifocalize and shunt and wait in many, in many steps, you uh, rehabilitate, re-recruit the pulmonary arteries. That is the only way how to achieve successful biventricular repair. It was just a discussion yesterday. Uh, Megun probably is old-fashioned and not valid more, but a Nakata index is a very good index just to assess the progression of the growth of the pulmonary arteries and uh, to assess the ability of the patients to undergo the biventricular repair. What should be the advantages of the early one stage repair? Less shunt complications, preventing hypoxic spells in the patient with, a, uh, with the obstructive major pulmonary arteries or, um, uh, or uh, small pulmonary arteries, no prolonged systemic desaturation, and some patients avoidance of congenital heart failure. And also the aim was reducing risk of pulmonary vascular obstruction and reducing risk of reintervention or reoperations. And we know nowadays that is not achievable. 
So this already mentioned from Professor Kumar, there is the famous uh, paper from Frank Henley, just only brief recapitulation. It was 85 patients. He was able to unifocalize uh, 90 percent of patients, of these 90 pa uh, percent patients, he uh, did a complete repair in two thirds, 60, 66 percent of patients, and the um, uh, actual survival three years were, was 80 percent. And another, you, you see the same picture, so we are uh, taking the same sources uh, for, uh, for our presentation. So there is a very low re-intervention rate in the patients with a complete VSD closure, and that is a very severe or a very uh, uh, um, uh, high rate of re-intervention in patients. They are not suitable for the bioventricular repair, what is clear because they are having a very bad pulmonary, uh, very bad pulmonary bed. <clears throat> Another nobody mentioned is a Bill Braun. It is the, probably the largest series of two 216 patients, and uh, he was able, he was able to complete, uh, to provide a complete biventricular repair in 85 percent of patients. And what is um, uh, just um, giving you idea how difficult it is? He got a very nice actual survival of 90 percent, but in 190 patients. He has got 196 reinterventions and 60 surgical reoperations. That's the graph. So you see the the mortality. There is 10 percent, and then you see the increase of the of the intervention rate, and. There is the reoperations. There is the RVPA conduit change. There is a <clears throat> in 35%, augmentation 30, VSD closure in 54. So still, but he is taking the conclusion that using strategy of unifocalization, intrapariac pulmonary artery reconstruction, and right ventricular pulmonary conduit, uh, having excellent long-term survival can be achieved even in this group of patients, even with absence of intrapericardial pulmonary arteries. But again, we've got to only follow up or actual survival of three years and no more. Even in such a large series, we are not having information about uh, further development after five, ten years. And what is postulating Frank Henley nowadays? So it is uh, from Watanabe 2014, and he's postulating that for early complete correction, there is the only selected group of patients and which one it is, they are in the congest congestive heart failure. And they are patients, they are having combination of a ductal origin of the pulmonary artery and MAPCAS on the other side, or it is a MAPCAS on the other side and a hemitronchus. So in these patients, you have to, you have to uh, go for the early complete repair. That means connect the, pulmonary, the, connect the vessels than uh, just to enlarge as possible not only the center part of the pulmonary arteries, but also the branching, that means the upper and lower lobe arteries, and then proceed to the, to the biventricular repair. So they also, after all this experience and all the uh, tremendous job he did, he just postulated that this group of patients is definitely one that is suitable for the biventricular repair early. Stage complete repair, so we are again by, <coughs> uh, by Christian Brizard, so they <coughs> abandoned the unifocalization of the, of the MAPCAS, and he published um, uh, 2012 this paper, and he's starting what is very important in the neonatal period. That is the neonatal period, they are 3 six weeks, but they are 0.7 to 70 weeks, and he's using uh, modified blelloctoxic shunt, Oda, Roger Me, that is the trunk-like uh, trunk like graph. He's waiting for a couple of months, then assessing the growth of the pulmonary arteries, and he's proceeding for the uh, palliation of the patching the pulmonary arteries and putting the RBPA conduit so promote the growth of the pulmonary arteries and going to the bioventricular repair. With this protocol, he was able, done in 20 patients, just to, uh, to 
did a biventricular repair in 12 patients. Six patients are awaiting for the biventricular repair, and uh, other patients are awaiting the interim, um, uh, awaiting uh, interim palliation with pulmonary artery patching and RVPA conduit. This is just only showing, even Christian Brizard is using Rakata index, Victor, so he is happy just to assess the growth of the pulmonary arteries that is real, and you see the initial palliation the already nicely developed, or moderately nicely developed, both pulmonary arteries with RVP conduit, and that is the then end stage um, uh, at the time of the biventricular repair. So he's concluding the rehabilitation of hypoplastic native pulmonary arteries by non-atal shunting regimen without MAPCA translocation for pulmonary atresia of ESD and MAPCAs provides encouraging results with excellent early survival because he's having no early or no late mortality. What problems we still have? It is a wide spe spectrum of underlying anatomy. It is a wide spectrum of uh, surgical strategies. It is our high burden of healthcare system. And these patients, um, they need multiple reinterventions and reoperations that is rising from 20 to 80 percent. And it is a lack of data for long term survival and quality of life of these patients. This is the reality. And our current uh, surgical strategy in, in Leipzig it was a small girl, neonate, there was a pulmonary atresia with confluent hypoplastic pulmonary arteries with one MAPCA, the right pulmonary artery of two millimeters, the left 1.5 uh, small uh, main pulmonary trunk, two millimeters, and we did, um, uh, in the first week of life, we did a, a Roger Mead, is a, a truncus-like uh, shunt, and in a four days later, we closed uh, one MAPCA to the, to the um, uh, right lung in the cat lab, in the second shunt, we did it after five months that uh, <coughs> uh, uh, the girl needed an angioplasty of the left, left pulmonary artery in six months, and only uh, one month ago, she uh, got another angioplasty of the left and right pulmonary arteries. And now, there is the initial angiogram of these very tiny pulmonary arteries. There is the MAPCA to the right lung, intrapulmonary confluent. And it is the last angio one month ago, you see in the periphery, nicely developed pulmonary tree, but severe hilar stenosis on the left side. And rather smallish, hypoplastic right pulmonary in this picture. So what we will do in one month, we will, uh, we will schedule the chart for the another palliation. That means we will try to do the hyalum to hyalum patching, reconstruction of pulmonary artery, and to put another chunk, another shunt to promote the growth of the pulmonary arteries. So what is our experience? So in 16 years, we've got a 57 patients. We, as a primary repair in neonatal period, we did it 24 patients, 16 with PA conduit, eight with transannual patch, six patients with unifocalization, and six with the VSD fenestration. There are these patients with unifocalization, all of them got a fenestration, and we did a fenestration just on the left side of the VSD patch. We put a monocast valve that is allowing the flow of the blood from the right side to the left side, and if the situation is, uh, is um, better and uh, is better uh, compliance of the lung and better flow through the lung, then if shunt changes, it is not, uh, it is impossible uh, shunting from the left side to the right side. Primary shunting, everything is neonatal period, 33 patients, 23 patients got a, a modified well calcium shunt, 10 patients got an AP shunt, ligation PDA, we ligated PDA at the, at the time of the operation, and uh, two patches in these patients. Out of these 33 patients, we were able to uh, secondary repair, 
to do a secondary repair, but a complete repair. In 27 patients, we use the conduit. In 22, transannular patch. In two, one unifocalization, one patient, and one patient got an additional uh, left and right, uh, right uh, pulmonary patch. What a conduit um, belongs, it is a already difference if you are expected high pressure or if you are expected an optimal, an optimal situation. In an optimal situation, we will use a contact graft. In a situation with a high pressure, we will not use a contact graft. We'll use a shell eye or lab core conduit because they got a uh, better resistance to the dilatation in, a, uh, in, a, in this situation of high pressure of the pulmonary arteries. And tertiary repair, so there are deep patients, there are true patients with a minimal pulmonary, diminutive pulmonary arteries. It was <coughs> conduit at five, and we still have to again and again repatch the pulmonary arteries. If you go, we've got a 1.7 early mortality, the same late mortality, so we are also at 90% uh, of survival, and we've got a 40 reinterventions, especially for the, uh, for the stenotic pulmonary arteries in the periphery. So, conclusion, different strategies could achieve the goal. Large non-confluent MAPCAS should be unifocalized. Stage approach improved rehabilitation of hypoplastic pulmonary arteries. RVPA conduit as a palliation, as an interim palliation to biventricular repair, improves PA's growth. Heart failure, hemitronchus with MAPCAS or uh, uh, ductus origin of the pulmonary artery and MAPCAS are indication for early neonatal complete repair. Whatever we do, our patients suffer from high morbidity and high intervention rate that is influenced negatively and limited quality of life and life expectancy. Just to improve that, we have to work in the congenital heart team. That means we have to tailor individually for each patient in a session of the cardiac surgeons, cardiologists, interventionalists, and radiologists, the best, uh, best uh, therapeutical plan for every each patient. Thank you for your attention.